Before we get into episode 141, I wanted to tell you a little about Believe You Can 2021, the talent show presented by the Keystone Chapter of the National Federation of the Blind of Pennsylvania. We're looking for performers because everyone knows you don't want me to sing. Go to believeyoucan.live, fill out the form, and Lisa will get back to you with all the information you need. We're really hoping you'll help out and get involved. Tickets are also available on sale at believeyoucan.live. Thanks so much for your support. From Studio B in Swarthmore, this is the I Can't See You podcast with David. It's like blind people for dummies. Hello there, and welcome to episode 141 of the I Can't See You podcast. My name is David, at David Benj on all the socials. I really appreciate you joining me for this episode, and I hope you're doing well and staying safe with all the damnation that's going on with the fires out west and the flooding in the east and tornadoes and everything's going crazy. And Delta and all the other new variants, all sorts of crazy stuff. But I do have a couple of other things to talk about in today's episode. Before we really get into the main topic, I just wanted to give an update on our patio dining set that I've mentioned a few times over the last six weeks that we bought from BJ's. We, ha we got it all set up. One chair was defective. It then took us four or five weeks to try and get the chair replaced. They wouldn't do it over the phone. They wouldn't do it via email. They wouldn't do it at the store. We j they wouldn't break up the set. It has just been unreal. So we fought the charge. Amex originally sided with BJ's. We went back to American Express and said, hey, look, you know, it's on them. The chair is defective. We tried to return it to them and they wouldn't take it. Finally, they sent me an email out of the blue saying that we could return the entire set. Okay, that's fine. We can return the entire set. We only wanted one chair replaced, but okay, you want to lose the entire sale? Fine. They came and they picked it up yesterday, and there was a little weird thing that went on when the guy was picking it up. He said, where's the cover? And I, there was no cover that came with the table, but you know, we'll see what happens. I'm sure this is not over. Shortly after they picked up the set yesterday... And shortly before, the skies opened up with thunder and lightning and rain and wind and everything else. I don't know that the sky opens up for wind. I think that just comes along the surface. But whatever. Liz gets a call from FedEx. I almost called it Federal Express, but then I'd be dating myself. <laughs> and they said that they had a delivery for us of a patio dining set. We had no idea. So we said, OK, scheduled the delivery assuming that it was going to be just a replacement set for the one they took away. We only needed one chair replaced. We didn't need the whole thing replaced. Everything else was fine. It comes today, and I am down here editing episode four of White Canes Connect, which will drop shortly uh, on this show notes page uh, once Lisa approves it. Um, and Liz yells down to me, and she asks me to come upstairs and come outside. I go outside and I said, what's the problem? I said, what's, what's wrong with the delivery? She said, it's not the same set. And we had a seven piece set, so a table and six chairs. It was a high top table, um, which was nice because Ziggy couldn't get to parts of that. So, you know, we thought that was kind of safe and that's why we picked it. Well, the set that they sent us was a nine piece set. So a table and eight chairs. It was square, not rectangular. You know, we were on the fence whether we should even accept it, and in the end, we decided not to accept it because it wasn't what we ordered. We didn't know what it was, and you know maybe it's better, but that's not what we wanted. And there was a little bit of uh, give and take from uh, Yelisa, who was the uh, truck driver, which I, I was shocked by herself. When they delivered the original set, it was two guys. Now it's one girl, and... Um, <laughs> And, you know, I, I guess I gave her, <laughs> I guess she was feeling a little bit of the Hernandez tone <laughs> because she said, look, I, it's not my fault. I said, I know. I'm, I said, I'm sorry. I said, this has just been a nightmare, this entire thing, since the time I clicked to order it on May 24th and it was delivered on June 2nd. I said, it has been nothing but trouble for one chair that was defective. And I said, it's not you. Believe me, it's not you. And if, I, if you're getting that from my tone, I apologize and, you know, Liz then got the paper back from her and wrote refused and, you know, not as ordered, uh, you know, because she was worried that she was going to get in trouble. I don't know why, but so that's where we stand. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens. Then Liz 
called BJ's and they said, of course, they were going to take care of things and we were going to get an email from them stating all this stuff that Liz and this person on the other end of the phone talked about. We know how BJ's customer service is. We never hear from them. They said they're going to call us back. They never do. It is just unreal. So I'm just interested to see what, what went on there. So meanwhile, you know, um, we ate at that dining set maybe three times, maybe four uh, all summer. You know, we certainly, you know, couldn't have a lot of folks over because we were down a chair. You know, we, we thought about having a couple of other couples over that we usually get together uh, for dinner with, but we figured, you know, we don't want anybody sitting on that defective chair in case it is, you know, super, <laughs> super defective. So, you know, it was basically Liz, Jane, and I, or just Liz and I eating at it. And we did it m most times when... Uh, we had Ziggy outside with us, and he was, you know, he was, you know, busy with a frozen banana inside a Kong. Um, they kept him busy, and we didn't want to put him in the cage to do that because, you know, he had already been in the cage, I guess, earlier in the days that we that we ate out there. So three or four times we used it. So now we're looking for another outdoor dining set. So hopefully we'll find something on sale this weekend, or maybe BJ's will just send a different one somewhere along the line. We told them we didn't want anything else from them. And uh, as I said last week, we're, we're done with them for anything but groceries and, you know, paper products and things like that. I mean, it's just been unreal with them. Their customer service has been just, just horrible, just horrible. So just keep that in mind when you're thinking about ordering anything of any value from them. Uh, it's going to be hard to return it. I mean, I guess if you take it, if you order from this, you buy it from the store, you have a different recourse uh, where you can carry it back in. But, uh, but otherwise, I, I certainly would not order again online uh, for anything other than groceries. So the main thing that I wanted to talk today about, and some folks are probably going to be tired of hearing about this, but it's something I'm really excited about. And it actually has to do with, with being blind. And it is the upcoming fantasy football draft, which I've mentioned before, uh, we have been recruited, the league has been recruited to be part of a documentary. So there's going to be a director. In fact, I met with the director a couple days ago via Zoom. He was in Italy. I obviously am, was here in Studio B. And just all sorts of things that are going on. And it has just been so stressful for me to deal with this because of my computer issues. Some of the things that I normally would do on my own, I was afraid to because, you know, I've told you about the phishing scam and then the email issues I was having where somebody certainly had gotten into my email account one way or another, whether it was before the phishing scam or after, and was responding as people that I had sent emails to and responding to those emails as those people you know, one was for the Keystone Chapter t-shirts saying that uh, he wanted me to ACH the money and it wasn't the person who I bought the t-shirts from. And, and by the way, just so you know, if you can visualize, I am currently wearing the Keystone Chapter t-shirt in Irish green uh, with the logo on the front and the live the life you want on the back. Uh, I happened to put that on today. I thought that would be nice to have on and instead of my normal black t-shirt, which I'll get to that like, the t-shirt, the black t-shirt <laughs> thing in a minute. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So, you know, so I was worried that, you know, I can kind of deal with the email issues because I've used my email account a lot less since. And, I'm, you know, because it's my primary email account, I'm worried that somebody will get into any of my other accounts that I've signed up with using that email account. Now, to the best of my knowledge, it hasn't happened. But... At this point, some of the stuff I have to enter is very um, private data, you know, and personal stuff, you know, social security number, um, all that sort of stuff, you know. And I certainly don't want that going, you know, going into the wrong hands because, you know, then I'd be worried about, you know, identity theft. And as I've said before, I don't know who would want to be me. Uh, other than my credit score, there, <laughs> there's no reason anybody would want to be me. <laughs> no reason whatsoever. Um, so, you know, I was paranoid about doing the stuff on my computer. So when I would get an email, I'd see it on my phone. And then I would go to Liz and say, hey, Liz, go into, you know, and I actually switched the account I, that they communicated with me to. Um, 
you know, to my I can't see you podcast at gmail.com, which is the one you should use if you have show ideas or have comments or questions. Um, you know, again, I can't see you podcast at gmail.com and reach out there. But I've been using that now as my primary email address because, you know, I trust the security a little bit more from Google. I, I'm not sure I even saying that. I can't believe I'm saying that out loud. You know, meanwhile, the G lady is sitting on my desk, probably listening to everything I say. Um, and, you know, I just feel a little more comfortable with that. So I would get the email. I would go to Liz and say, hey, Liz, hey, we got to respond to this email or we have to go here. Or we have to go there. Well, as it turns out, all the places that we had to go to <laughs> were not accessible. So it was good that Liz was helping me for some of the things. Some of the guys and girls in the league were having a big, a, a good deal of trouble just getting in and filling stuff out. Some of the forms um, you couldn't easily get from one field to another, or it wouldn't say what the field was. And then finally, um, they ended up sending out some other documents that were a lot easier. You know, Word documents, and if you weren't comfortable doing the Word documents uh, for some of the stuff, um, you know, they would, they could call you and take the information down and then fill it in on your behalf. You know, it just raised a whole bunch of questions on my side because somewhere along the line, you've got to be trusting of your information. And, you know, Verizon Media, who is doing this whole thing because they're the ones that own the Yahoo fantasy app that we use. And, and again, if, if you are not um, using the Yahoo Fantasy app, it is accessible to the blind folks um, almost 100%. And again, as I've said before, nothing is ever 100%, it seems. Um, but the Yahoo Fantasy app is just outstanding. It's better than um, the few others that we've tried throughout the years, whether it be ESPN, which was not very good, um, and a couple others that I don't remember at this moment. Uh, but the Yahoo Fantasy app is, is just outstanding. Um, so... You know, so you've got to trust someone to plug in your information if you're not doing it on your own. And, you know, I get it. Some people, you know, live by themselves and, you know, don't have somebody there with them that they could, you know, have help out. So, they, you know, they've got to trust somebody on Verizon Media to do it. Um, I don't know that I would go to the talent agency that's being used called Talex um, or ADP. And I, I was really, I was surprised to learn that ADP site, and I hadn't gotten to that part of the, <laughs> that part of the process to, you know, see how it was or how it wouldn't work for me. Um, and again, Liz helped me with some of it, but the problem when, you know, when Liz helps, I don't know, sometimes she'll go through the forms, you know, obviously she knows all my answers. So she'll go through and, you know, and then I don't know, Hey, what did I answer to this? You know, I <laughs> just on a side note, I one time filled out a, um, uh, jury duty card for her back in the day when I could actually see it a little bit better and actually read it. And, and this is the funny part because I could actually see it to read it. I actually checked off, checked off the box that I am not a U.S. citizen for Liz when she was, <laughs> was called for jury duty and had to do the questionnaire. Um, uh, we still laugh about it. And again, it's got to be over 30 years ago that I did that. So it's just kind of funny. But um, but I, like I said, I'm very surprised of ADP. I'm just envisioning someone blind trying so hard to get a job, and then they finally get a job with someone, and then they say, okay, well, here, here's where you go for the onboarding. You go to ADP's website, and you do this, and you do that, and then you're good to go, and you'll start getting your paychecks and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so you, get the, you fought like hell to get the job that you had to be so much better for because you can't see. And I don't know why I say can't see as opposed to blind all the time, but I do. Whatever. You get this job, and now you got to go to ADP, and you can't fill out the stuff there because it's not accessible. And I, I, I just, you know, I thought the Americans with Disability Act help folks take care of stuff like that. And they don't. And um, from what Brian said, I think there was, I think it was the ADP site. There are a couple of companies out there that offer... I don't know what the, the official term is, but they basically, it's something that you can click somewhere on the screen that will make it quote unquote accessible, but it doesn't. It doesn't work right. And it gives the company who has 
you know, bought this service from the other company, in this case, ADP and whatever the other company, you know, the company that provides the service to make it accessible, it gives ADP the feeling, hey, the form is accessible, but then it's not really accessible because the service that, uh, and the software that this company is providing, ADP, doesn't really work that well. And there was actually a resolution this year at the uh, National Federation of the Blind National Convention about um, the companies that provide this service and software to other companies that that is not to be construed as making something accessible. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, what goes on with that. But I was just surprised that, um, you know, that ADP of all places, you know, wouldn't, you know, wouldn't work. And as we're filling out all these forms, I'm terrified that one, I'm getting an email or missing an email that is still going to my normal account, my I Can't See You account, as opposed to the I Can't See You podcast at Gmail account. So I've got that open on in webmail to see that. But again, even though I've done virus scans and whatnot on my computer, I'm still paranoid about filling things out. And the other night I got an email into my I Can't See You podcast account from um, one of the people at Verizon Media saying that I had to fill out this form, he needed it back quickly. And I started to wonder, is this real? And then I read one of his other emails and he said he'd be sending this form out. Everything seemed real. So I went ahead and did it because it was late at night and I figured I'm not gonna remember to do this the next day. You know, when Liz is awake, she of course was sleeping already. So I just did it on my own. And you know, fingers crossed that there's not 17 other David Goldsteins out there uh, going to stores buying things <laughs> with my good credit. So we'll see, but that's that's been my my biggest fear with this whole thing because uh, you know again a lot of a lot of information of mine has to be given you know because it's basically a job it's basically it's kind of cool it's kind of a, basically an acting job um, and um, the logistics of everything getting the paperwork done and it's a short turnaround time because everything has to be done you know it's next week you know next Wednesday I. I get on the train to head up to New York um, to do the draft the following day, Thursday the 9th. And it, it just sounds very cool. And, you know, it's going to be a long day on the 9th. We've been told, you know, 10-hour day of shooting. And and <laughs> in my case, drafting terrible players. Um, I don't know. I might get a couple of good ones. <laughs> I'm trying to find sleepers because that's going to be the only way I'm going to do well. So if you have any tips on uh, rookies that I should have, um, you know, please, please reach out and, uh, and let me know uh, your thoughts because, um, you know, there's no, there's no money in this league, as I've said before, but I don't like finishing in the bottom all the time. Uh, you know, and I did make the playoffs last year. I mean, my team was still terrible. I, I think I only had four or five wins, um, but I did make the playoffs because the teams at the top were that good. <laughs> so, so any, any tips you could give me, uh, I'd appreciate that. You know, I certainly won't be picking Cam Newton. He is one of my all-time favorites, too, and uh, disappointed to see that he got cut. Although my c cousin in New England is very excited and was happy about Mac Jones. So maybe I'll pick him. Or the guy from the Jets. Kind of like that rookie. Obviously, is my second quarterback, not my first. Um, so, so the logistics of all this stuff, getting done and having it done right so that I can film on the ninth, you know, his, you know, is just super stressful. And then the biggest stressor of them all has been the COVID test that I need. It's called a PCR test. And it is the thing that you shove up your nose and scrape your brain and put it in a bag and send it off. Well, CVS does it, and that's the closest thing around here. And I have to go to CVS because Liz starts school on the 7th, the day that I have to do the test, because if I don't have it done on the 7th, I'm obviously leaving on the 8th, the 6th is Labor Day. So I can't have it done that day because nobody's open. Or if they're open, they're not doing the testing that day. You know, I could probably wait and go to one of the typical places that do um, medical testing, 
but I don't know what the turnaround time is there, number one. And number two, I would have to wait for Liz to come home from school, and then that's later in the day, and I don't want to chance it because CBS has said it's 24 to 48 hours to find out the results, and I figure, okay, if I, and I have an appointment scheduled for 1030 in the morning on Tuesday to get this test, so worst case, if it's 24 hours, I'll have it by 1030 in the morning, so they tell me, on Thursday, the day we shoot. And because we're doing the watch party that night, I'm thinking we're not going to start super early because God knows I am not good in the morning. And that's just going to make my team that much worse. I may end up with John Kitten as my starting quarterback. So this PCR test has to be done through the drive-thru at CVS. And we found this out when we walked into the CVS and asked about it. You know, we said, is there any way we can do it on Monday? And they said, no. And and the guy said, well, you know, you have to go through the drive-thru. I said, well, clearly I don't drive. I said, can I walk up the drive-thru? It it made me think of uh, when I was in school in Miami and, and, you know... (laughs) I, that, that was a very short-lived experiment, my, my college days in Miami. But my friend and roommate, Pat, had a check to deposit. And we were, you know, walking down uh, Dixie Highway, which is Route 1 in uh, Coral Gables there, just south of Miami. And I don't know if we had gone to get something to eat. He had a check. And he said, oh, let's go to the bank. I'll, I'll deposit the check. And I don't remember if the branch was closed or if this was one of those branches that only had drive throughs I don't remember what the story was, but we walked through the drive through And the girl said to us, well, you know, you can't come through here unless you have wheels. And, you know, Pat said, well, I, I, I've come through on my bike. And, and she said, yeah, that's fine. I said, <laughs> and then I started, you know, again, probably with the Hernandez tone, said, what about, you know, can I come through on a skateboard? Can I come through on rollerblades? I, I don't know if... I'm really dating myself. I don't know if roller bl- rollerblades were around then. Um, and um, so I guess I said roller skates. And she said, yeah, you just need wheels. I said, okay. So we, I asked Liz, I said, can we go around to the drive through to see if I can do this? <clears throat> so we walk around, we walk out the store and around to the drive through And we're standing there and the guy from CVS, not the guy we were talking to, but the guy who's working the drive-thru window, is, you know, asks if he could help. And, you know, Liz explains to him, you know, he has to do the COVID test, you know, what goes on, what's the procedure? You know, he's going to have to walk up because, you know, there's no one to drive him and this and that and the other. And so he goes through everything and he's telling us about it. And he said... um, He says, I hand you this, and then you open it, and you have to break the Q-tip thing off, and you stick it up your nose, and then you put it back in this container, and then you put this container in, I don't know if it was a bag, again, you know, I couldn't see what was going on, Um, and then you seal it, and then you put it in this, there's a receptacle right next door. It kind of looked like, or sounded like, um either the drawer that slides out when you get your meds or if you've ever done a, you know, a night deposit at a bank. It kind of sounded like that. You put it in there and, um, and uh, you certainly don't put it in the thing marked trash. <laughs> um, and, you know, as we're there, the guy who was at the window had just started to do it. So Liz is watching him. He says, oh, this guy is doing it. And the guy, you know, the guy motioned. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to do it. And so Liz is doing the play-by-play of this guy doing the, <laughs> doing the COVID test and asking him questions and, and so forth and so on. So we'll see how that goes on Tuesday. But I, I am definitely concerned about doing that on my own because, you know, I, you know, I, I didn't see what was going on. And, and um, you know, I don't know how long the Q-tip thing is that I shove up there. And I don't know what the container looks like that I put it in. You know, there's all sorts of things that, you know, I just don't know and I won't know. You know, maybe I'm worrying about, about it for nothing, but, you know, we'll see. And then, of course, once I put it in that receptacle, when am I going to get the results? So it's very stressful, all that stuff going on. And then there was an email the other day, and I mentioned earlier about the black T-shirt. <laughs> we got an email about wardrobe. You know, wear what you normally wear, it said. And, you know, obviously in the summer I wear shorts, usually cargo shorts, and a black t-shirt. You know, today I don't have a black t-shirt on. Like I said, I have the Irish Green Keystone Chapter t-shirt because I have 
dark blue pants on and I don't like black and blue together. You know, I like, you know, maybe it, maybe it works, but I can't see the difference. So it just looks like one whole unit instead of, <laughs> instead of shorts and a t-shirt. So I have to send this picture. And I said to Liz, before I came down here to record, I said, I need to send a picture of what I want to wear for the draft so they can approve it and tell me it's okay. It's not okay. And, you know, for the last, I don't know, maybe decade, you know, in the summer, I wear usually a black t-shirt, sometimes with a logo. Now they don't want, sadly, they don't want things with logos on them because, you know, there's all sorts of rights and this and that and the other that have to get get settled out. I was a little disappointed because I was going to wear, I was hoping to wear my I Can't See You face mask. It sounds like we're going to go maskless while we're recording. Um, and, and let me tell you, let me get off of the clothing for a minute. The laundry list of COVID guidelines that was sent from this production company is crazy. And I, I joked with Liz, I said, it almost looked like you wrote this. Um, because she has, even before COVID, she will not touch an elevator button, for example, or a hand railing or a doorknob. She will either use her sleeve, um, you know, pull it down over her hand and do it, or use the bottom of her shirt if it's not tucked in to open a door or to push an elevator button or to do whatever. And it's just kind of funny that um, basically the COVID guidelines that the production company sent out said to, <laughs> if you're getting on an elevator, use the, um, you know, use your, use your shirt sleeve to push the button. Um, you know, it doesn't really work too well if you're blind because then you can't feel <laughs> what the button is. So, um, so I don't know, it kind of has me a little paranoid, but I'll get back to that in a second. So as far as the clothing goes, for the last 10 or 15 years, maybe more, my typical um, clothing is black t-shirt and either jeans or shorts. Um, once it gets cold out, it's either a long sleeve black t-shirt or a mock turtle or when it gets cold out, a turtleneck. Now, when it really gets cold out, I then put on a flannel, usually an Eddie Bauer flannel. And sometimes if it's really cold out and <laughs> that, that, that number is rising as I get older, really cold used to mean like, you know, in the twenties, now really cold. We, we went for a walk the other night, really cold was <laughs> really cold was 62 with uh, winds of 18 miles an hour. Of course I was in shorts and a t-shirt. So maybe that's why I was so cold. Um, so, so basically, you know, in this warm weather, I'm going to wear one of two things, either a long sleeve black t-shirt or a short sleeve black t-shirt. And I said to Liz, well, what should I use for my third picture? And then I remembered I have a, a black polo shirt with a pocket that I could use that I, that I wear fairly often. <laughs> so, so that's when you see me in this video, it'll be blue jeans, uh, my New Balance sneakers and um, either a black t-shirt, a long sleeve black t-shirt or a black polo shirt. And, um, you know, I got the idea, not from Homer Simpson because his shirt is white. Uh, I got the idea, you know, Steve Jobs used to wear the same thing. And I thought, you know, it's so hard for me to figure out what I'm pulling out of my closet. I, I said, what a great idea. You don't have to think about it. You pull out the jeans. I pull the jeans out from a cabinet. I pull my t-shirt out from the closet and I don't have to worry about what it is. So I have probably, I don't know, maybe eight or so, nine black t-shirts. Um, like I said, the black polo shirt, a few long sleeve black t-shirts. Um, I, I don't know, probably half a dozen turtlenecks, black turtlenecks. And, you know, that's usually what I wear. And then, you know, one or two mock, uh, black mock turtles. Uh, you know, it just makes, just makes it easy. Now, when I get confused is <laughs> when I reach into the turtleneck drawer, if it, if wash hasn't been done in a while, you know, I do have a navy blue one that I can't tell the difference. So, uh, so sometimes I make a mistake and I wear that. You know, that was from before I started wearing all the, all the black. Um, you know, I just like the look. It's a, you know, it's a nice look and, um, you know, <laughs> it just works for me. You know, and, you know, certainly works for Homer and it worked for Steve Jobs. I'm not nearly as talented as Steve Jobs or as funny as Homer Simpson. So, um, but I like it. So, um, you know, so the COVID test and then there's going to be COVID tests on set and they're going to have hand sanitizer and they're going to have not only masks, but they're going to have the face shields. There's going to be gloves. And I, I you know, it's, it's just reading the guidelines has made me paranoid about everything 
you know, obviously I'm going to be in a, in a space where there is, you know, a whole bunch of people I haven't been in a space with before. Um, you know, I've never met any of these people in real life. Um, you know, I've talked to Brian on the phone. I've talked to Brian via email. Um, clearly I've talked now to the director, you know, via Zoom, but, you know, nobody have I ever been together, you know, in a room with. And, um, you know, so it's, I'm just kind of wondering, like, you know, what are we doing for food and so forth? Now, the cool thing is I found out today, I actually found out the other day, but I didn't know what it was. We're going to be shooting at a place called Douglas House, and it's not actually in New York City. It's in Orangeburg, New York. And this is a place that sounds like it, you know, when it went up for sale the last time, production somebody that does TV and, and film production said, hey, this would be a great house that we could do movie and TV productions in. It's got eight or so acres. Um, it's an old farmhouse. And, you know, it's you you take it by the day. So, you know, I'm guessing, you know, they uh, they got this they got this place by the day. And um, so we're not even staying in New York City. We're staying, I, I think, in White Plains, New York, which is just north of New York City. And Orangeburg is as well. So, so I'm kind of interested to see the place. Now, I'm a little disappointed because I don't think I'm going to be able to see Jane um, at all. I, you know, I was, if I was staying in the city, obviously I'd be able to, you know, see her either the night before um, or the after, you know, after the draft and after the watch party. Um, you know, I thought I could see her. Um, but I don't know, you know, there's still a chance I could see her on Friday before I leave. My train leaves, uh, like three or so in the afternoon, you know, maybe I can connect with her for lunch or something or, you know, just to catch up, um, you know, or she could, you know, come over to, you know, her office isn't too far from Penn station. So, you know, maybe she can meet me there when she's out getting lunch, um, when I get in, although I'm getting in late in the day on, um, on Wednesday, and I think she has an event either that day or the next day. You know, Fashion Week is that week, so I'm wondering if that, you know, made it harder to find places, you know, to shoot in. But I'm very excited for it. Um, again, I, I'm sure my team is not going to be good. <laughs> it's not going to be good, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm excited to do it. I'm excited to meet everybody in the league. Uh, you know, especially Brian and Allison, who I listened to on that Real Blind Tech show, and, and Ed on that Real Blind Tech show. And, um, you know, and some of the other guys, like um, uh, the guy that's won the league, I think this is the sixth season. I've been in it for five. Well, if this is the sixth, yeah, this will be my fifth. Um, the guy that won it like all but one year, the year I lost to Brian, um, he's from Canada. So, you know, that created... <laughs> Traveling for him created even more issues. He's from uh, Montreal. And um, he didn't win the blind fantasy hockey, though, which is kind of funny. Um, so I'm interested in meeting him. His name is Nick. Um, you know, and a few others. There's some new folks that have come in. And um, sadly, uh, David Cleveland, the person who I talked to a few times and actually had on a podcast back a couple of years ago, um, he is no longer in the league. And I, I don't really know what went down there um, Seems a little funny what happened there, but uh, hopefully he's back next year, um, you know, because he was the one I probably texted and talked with most other than Brian um, in the league. You know, Kasaya will not be there. She's going to be appearing virtually. I guess, you know, timing didn't work for her as far as her job. She also works for Verizon Media. Um, or maybe she couldn't couldn't get up to New York whatever. She's not going to be there. There's a guy in California that's not going to be there. And I think there's one other person not going to be there. So I'm really excited to, you know, to get together with these folks and, um, and just see what's going on and, and meet them in real life. And, um, you know, and hopefully, you know, make some more connections because I, you know, that's one thing that, um, you know, yeah, we talk online and, and whatnot, but it's, you know, it's so different when you, when you actually meet in person. So uh, looking forward to that again. So next week's episode, while it probably will drop on the 9th, I'm going to record it on Tuesday. Um, not 100% sure what the episode is going to be. Usually I base it on what, what's happened to me over the last week. Um, maybe I'll have something to talk about Tuesday with the PCR test from CVS. I hope that, uh, <laughs> I hope that uh, swab that has to uh, get up into my upper nose isn't as long as their receipts because man, would that be long. Um, 
So we'll see how that goes. So I really do appreciate listening to this episode. And before I go, I just wanted to mention again, Believe You Can 2021. It's the Keystone Chapter fundraiser talent show. And again, it's going to be virtual this year. Uh, We're really excited for it. We're trying to get new folks in instead of having repeats from last year. There were some talented folks in it last year, but we want to give other folks a try. So if you want to sign up for it, go to believeyoucan.live. That's L-I-V-E. And there is a document on there to talk about what you do and who you are and, you know, whether you sing or dance or tell jokes. And again, got to be PG. Um, And again, we don't want me singing anything. Um, In fact, the title of my first album will be I Can't See You and I Can't Sing. (laughs) But I do like to sing and uh, my family can attest to that because I sing about everything. (laughs) It's like, uh, what was that? Uh, There was a cop show back in the 80s. um, Cop Rock, I think. Um, Yeah, it's like that (laughs) when I'm doing anything around the house um, with the dog, with food, whatever. (laughs) So go to believeyoucan.live. And um, if you don't want to perform, that's okay. Oh, and you do have to have uh, one special trait to perform. No, you don't have to be good. You could sing as bad as I can. But you have to be blind or visually impaired. Uh, to perform in the event. Um, But again, tickets are on sale as well. You can also go to believeyoucan.live. Tickets are $10 and $25 through the 9th of October. Uh, The event is on the 16th of October, and um, they do go up for that last week for people who are straggling, who want to buy a ticket and just put it off. Um, They go to 15 and 30 um, if you wait after the 9th of October. But I do appreciate you if you would go over there and purchase a ticket. Uh, We have some uh, performers already lined up, but we're looking for more. Uh, You have until the 25th of September to get the application in to perform. Uh, Lisa will get back to you with all the pertinent details once you send her that form. And there's actually going to be a, she's calling it a screen test. It's really to make sure you're capable of doing all the things that's going to be needed so you can perform live. Um, you know, we pick the domain name live.live because we want it to be live. And, you know, we were hoping this year it could be in person, but, you know, COVID had other plans for us with that. So it will be virtual again via Zoom. And, um, you know, really looking forward to it and uh, still working real hard on it, trying to find some voting software that um, <laughs> we can use as opposed to, doing it via Zoom like we did last year because it was it was tough for a lot of folks um, to vote um, for the for the winners. Um, I have kind of struck out. I was looking at one software that um, just wasn't really accessible and they wouldn't give me more than the 14 day free trial to try and get it to work. So uh, I did not uh, continue on with that. And again, um, if it's not up when this episode drops on the show notes page, which will be at icantseeyou.com slash 141, I will also have episode four of White Canes Connect, which this episode will have Eugenio from the Greater Philly chapter, the NFB of Pennsylvania, and a guy named Mike Patterson. Both are involved with, with, he said, (laughs) with the American Blind Bowling Association, and it's uh, blind bowlers, which I'd love to do. It sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I, I just, I don't think my hands could hold up in my wrist, but it does sound like fun. And the cool thing is they actually, uh, the league actually bowls in a place called Drexel Hill, not too far from where I live here in Swarthmore. Uh, I just, I just don't know that I could do it week in and week out for, you know, half a year or so, um, without, without, <laughs> without excruciating pain. Um, but it again, you know, one of the issues that blind folks have is, you know, getting together with, um, other blind folks, you know, and, you know, talking and being with people that, you know, know what you're dealing with and going through and, um, you know, know not to say when you ask where the bathroom is and just point and say it's over there, Um, you know, and, uh, you know, it sounds cool. So I'm sure at some point once the season gets started with that, I'll probably go to, um, you know, go to it once or twice just to, just to say hi to some folks there and see what's going on. And, um, you know, we'll see how that goes, but it does sound cool. Uh, check that out. It's White Canes Connect episode four. If it's not on the show notes page, when the show notes drop today with this episode, it will be on shortly once Lisa approves the episode. 
which I had to do a lot of editing, and there was a lot of editing involved, and um, I think it came out okay. I'm getting pretty good at that. But again, I do appreciate you listening to episode 141 of the I Can't See You podcast. Remember, reach out if you have ideas for shows, if you've got questions or comments about blindness issues um, or the blindness community in general, 646-926-6350. You've got three minutes to leave your information. Please leave your name and your town. And if it's okay, if I use your recording on an upcoming episode, especially if it's a question, if it's a comment, you don't have to give permission. Um, But I'd like to. I'd like to use it, good or bad. It'd be fun either way. (laughs) Maybe you're the one that gave me the one star and you want to tell me why. Um, Or you could also reach out, as I mentioned earlier, I can't see you podcast at gmail.com. Remember, I can't see you sounds like a whole sentence, but it's only seven characters long. I C A N T C U podcast at gmail.com. Thanks again for listening. I hope you're staying safe. You're well, and I will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to the I can't see you podcast with David. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And don't forget to share the podcast with your friends.